the therapeutic landscape for advanced liver cancer has changed quite a bit over the last 10 years, for sure. Uh, you know, for a long time we only had serafinib, and then lenvantinib was approved based on the REFLEX study, which showed non-inferiority to serafinib. Uh, and lenvantinib is a little different TKI because it has a response rate of around 19% uh, in that study. Uh, but it was non-inferior for overall survival, where the median survival was around 13 and a half months. Meanwhile, there's the development of the PD-1, PD-L1 inhibitors, and Pembro was one of the first to be looked at in liver cancer and showed single agent activity in second line of, and also in front line with response rates of about 15, 18%. And then the idea that TKIs could modify the immune microenvironment and, and make uh, tumors more sensitive to IO was being investigated in a fairly large 100 patient single arm study of Len Pembro. We saw a response rate of around 36%, which is clearly higher than either drug alone. And that led to the LEAP002 study, which was a global placebo controlled randomized study in frontline liver cancer of Len Pembro versus Len alone. Unfortunately, that study, while confirming activity of Len Pembro, did not meet its primary endpoint of improving overall survival. Uh, it came very close. We did see that the combination had a response rate of around 26%, uh, but the primary endpoints of PFS and OS uh, did not meet statistical significance. I mean, PFS, there was no real change between the two arms, but OS survival with LEN was 19 months and with LEN Pembro 20 months, 21 months. So that 19 months with LEN was very new. Uh, we did not expect that. And even though the hazard ratio was 0.82 and the confidence interval was just reaching one with a p value of like 0 0.023, uh, because of the statistical design, it was a negative trial. You know, the landscape has changed since the readout of 002 with the approval of a Tezobev uh, in frontline. Ipinevo was just recently approved and Dervalumab and Tremulimumab. Uh, but I think there's still things to be gleaned from LEAP002. Uh, this idea that TKIs can modify and improve activity of, uh, of IO agents. You know, I, I think LEAP002 uh, suffered from some trial design challenges. Uh, and, and I think some of that has been made up now in other Len Pembro studies, such as LEAP012, the TASTE study, uh, which maybe we'll talk about in a minute. But we did see with Len Pembro that we can improve, improve duration of response, uh, disease control rates. Uh, and, you know, taken together, the regimen is active, it's just we not prove our primary endpoint, which ultimately in cancer clinical trials is what we have to do. So at this ASCO meeting, we presented longer term follow-up. We actually have a median follow-up of, uh, of about five years. And interestingly, uh, we see that you know, at benchmark survival of like at four years, 24% of the patients on the Len Pembro arm are still alive as compared to like 14% on the Lenvantinib control arm. Uh, and when we look at some of the longer follow-up from the checkpoint inhibitor doublets, which were positive for meeting their primary endpoints, uh, these numbers are very similar. You know, 24% is very comparable to what's been described with Dervatremi uh, and Ipinevo at three years. Uh, you know, the, the shape of the curves are very similar. Uh, I don't know that it's a late effect of IO versus just there's a subgroup of patients who do really well. Uh, we have no biomarker for them. We don't really know their clinical characteristics, but it speaks to the fact again that, you know, because we, we don't see that necessarily with single agent LEN, right? We have a control arm. And with a long-term single agent PEMBRO follow-up, uh, it's not that high. Right, there's always a tail with IO. Uh, but Len Pembro has been active, and, and like I mentioned before, the LEAP 012 study, which was just published in Lancet earlier this year, looked at uh, chemoembolization or TACE alone, uh, versus, or TACE and placebo, I should say, versus TACE and Len Pembro for intermediate liver cancer. 
And here we see a significant improvement in objective response with the combination up to 70% by modified resist. And this study did meet its primary endpoint of improving progression-free survival uh, and has a trend towards improving OS. The data is immature, but I, I think in that trial, which is in a different stage, different setting, uh, but with different statistical design assumptions, I think that does validate that Len Pembro is, is active in liver cancer. Again, it builds the case. And now with this long-term follow-up data, again, you know, I'd say it's unfortunate that we just missed our endpoint because personally, having used this regimen quite a bit since the phase one development and along, uh, it is act very active. I mean, the other thing to learn from LEAP002 is how the performance of Len Vantnib has changed over time, right? And Reflect survival was 13 and a half months. Now, single agent LEN is giving a survival of 19 months. And that was largely seen also recently in the Checkmate 90W study, which was Epinevo versus Lenvantnib or Serafinib. And in that study, 85% of patients had Lenvantnib. And the survival there was also like 19, 20 months. So, you know, that's very provocative to see this type of. Uh, improvement in survival, uh, just even with a, an active TKI. All of us are waiting to see if we can get approval for the regimen uh, based on LEAP-012, which was the chemoembolization study. You know, intermediate stage liver cancer for the past 25 years, uh, chemoembolization and local regional treatments have been the standard of care. Uh, we've been trying to improve on that for a long time. And, and now, between Emerald One, which was Dervalumab and Bevacizumab, uh, and, and LEAP012, which was Pembro and Vantnib, uh, we've done that. We've improved PFS. The question is, does improving PFS translate into a survival benefit? And that can be very hard to show because with intermediate disease, the natural history is probably three or four years survival, right? And these studies probably are not large enough uh, to, to power for OS. Now, we have not seen any survival data from Emerald One, but with, uh, with LEAP012, we have seen you know, early look at survival and the hazard ratio is 0.8. Uh, there's still a lot of events to happen and, and so longer follow-up is required. But I think certainly for, for patients uh, with intermediate disease, PFS can be a very meaningful endpoint. Uh, and especially if, if the response rate supports that and if we see quality of life data altogether, uh, you know, hopefully this regimen will get approved so we have another option for patients.